Hospitals are creepy for many reasons, but even more so when paranormal events plague its wards. Please welcome me in joining Duchess Dark for 10 True Paranormal Stories from Hospitals. But be aware, the first 5 stories will be found on this channel. And to finish off with the remaining 5, you will need to hop over to Duchess's channel. But just don't forget to like and comment before you go. And now without further ado, let's begin. I was a new nurse at our hospital and had only been working there for a couple of months. I had bought a patient of mine up from day surgery from the ER for an endoscopy and they called me back down and asked me to bring up her family as she didn't speak enough English to communicate and we needed her consent for a procedure. After dropping them off, I walked past the waiting room and headed back down the hall to the elevators. I took the way back to get to the ER and all the hallways were deserted. You see, this used to be the paediatric wing of the hospital, but it has been shut down for years and all the rooms are deserted, full of broken equipment, beds and just general crap. As I reached the nurses station at the T-junction, between the paediatric hallway and the hallway that goes down to the elevators, I saw a little girl standing across from the nurses station further down the hall. She had big pigtails and was wearing a brown dress and white shoes, holding a teddy bear. I thought perhaps she was a family member who had walked away from the day surgery waiting room. I was concerned that she would go into one of these rooms and might get hurt or lost. So I said, hey little girl, what are you doing? You don't need to be over here. You're going to get hurt. And I walked around the nurse's station so that I could grab her hand and bring her back. I shit you not. As I got about 15 feet away from her, she vanished. <laughs> Every hair on my body stood up straight, and I turned and ran like a bat out of hell to the elevator. I pounded that button for what seemed like an eternity, until the elevator got to the floor I was on. As I got back to the ER, I walked up to the nurse's desk, and one of the older nurses looked at me and said, Jeez, what's wrong with you? I remember babbling like an idiot as I tried to tell them what happened. After listening to me for a moment or two, the nurse said, Oh, you saw the little ghost girl? Yeah, she's been around here for years. And I remember replying, Well, thanks for telling me about this before. Apparently the ghost has been here ever since the ER, ducking in and out of patients' rooms and peeking around curtains. My wife worked up on the seventh floor and said that one time on nights, a whole row of patients started yelling about a little girl that was running around in the rooms. I guess she gets around. The very small step down unit I worked in was having nighttime staffing issues. I agreed to rotate to nights to help them out. It was a four bed, newly renovated unit. It was around 3 a.m., and I was watching the monitors, listening to the patient's snore. The pencil drawer slid open. I didn't think much of it, since the hospital was on a very busy avenue, and I thought it was caused by the vibrations from the traffic on the busy road below. After sliding the drawer back several times, I decided if the drawer felt it needed to be open, so be it. Several minutes later, I heard a noise in the room. The patient's bathroom door opening and the sound of someone pushing an IV pole. Since I did not have a clear view of the bathroom, 
I just thought one of the staff members from the main floor had dashed in to wash their hands. I looked up from my monitor viewing to see a patient we recently had in the unit. We'll call her Mrs. G. An older woman who came in with an atypical chest pain became septic due to a gallbladder issue. She evidently had expired in the unit. Although the hospital itself had been on site for years, this unit was newly renovated, right down to tearing down the walls and putting up new ones. I heard the patient's bathroom door open, and again, I heard the rattling of an IV pole and the shuffling of feet. I looked up and saw Mrs. G standing there in the middle of the floor, one hand pushing the IV pole and the other hand on top of the pump on the pole. She stopped walking, turned and waved, nodded her head, said everything was going to be okay, took a few steps and disappeared. Shortly after that vision, one of the nurses from the floor came to see if I needed anything. I told her I was okay and asked her if she had ever seen a ghost in the hospital. She looked at me, gasped, and asked, No, why? I explained to her what had just happened. She said she would never step foot in that room again. Mrs. G was the first patient to die in that unit. She was well liked by all the staff and my feeling was that she was just watching over us. The day shift came in and I told them my story. They weren't surprised. Through the years, working at various hospitals, I had worked as a nurse extern my senior year in nursing school, and I had heard older nurses telling their stories about ghosts. I thought they were just burnt out. <laughs> yes, there are ghosts in care facilities. If they're not seen, their presence is felt. They leave behind an energy. And it's always all around you. My mother trained as a nurse at the old Westminster Teaching Hospital in London in the 1950s. On one of her first night shifts, she was doing the rounds in the children's ward. Everything was fine. All of the kids were asleep. But in one of the rooms, she found the sink faucet running. Which was a bit weird, because it had been fine when she was there only a few minutes before. She figured that one of the kids must have gotten up and been thirsty or something. Turned it off, and carried on with the rounds. When her shift was over, she was checking out with the matron, who asked if she had anything to report. She said that there was nothing, except that someone had left a faucet on in one of the rooms. The matron looked horrified. She then explained that the ward was haunted by a ghost which washed its hands, leaving the faucet running whenever a child was going to die. My mother laughed this off and pointed out that none of the kids in the ward were seriously ill and went home. When she came in for her next shift in the evening, she discovered that a previously perfectly fine child in that room had had a sudden seizure and died only a few hours after she had found the open faucet. My mom used to be an RN at a hospital in a small western town. The hospital was connected to a senior living home, and at night, the RN on duty overwatched both sides of the building. She was usually the overnight RN, and would have either one or two CNAs working with her as well. She has experienced this apparition about six or seven times during her 10-year stint there, and everyone 
has referred to the apparition as the man in black. Each experience was identical, except for the location in the building. Frequently during the night, she would have to do her rounds, checking vitals, etc. It would have to walk around a corner from the nurse's station toward the six beds in the hospital and toward the senior home. She would see the apparition either right after rounding the corner or right after walking out of a room and walking to the next. Outside of the next room, she would see the apparition. The apparition was of the same person in black, old western style suit with warm black cowboy boots, worn black cowboy hat to match. The creepiest thing about this man was that he had no distinct face. She described it as though a man's face was drawn with charcoal and slightly smeared, slightly blurred. He had to have been about 6'5", and would tower over her 5'5 five five frame. But whenever she would see him, it could be 10 feet away or 3 feet away, he would just stand there looking at her, and then turn and walk into the room he was outside of. When she would walk into that room, there would not be any other person in there or anything out of place. The first few times scared her to a panic, but she slowly just went on without letting it freak her out. But with this man came some extra attention to that patient. The kicker was that in about 90% of all the experiences seen by other RNs as well, the patient's health would deteriorate in the next few days, and the patient most often passed away shortly after. So whenever the overnight RN saw the man in black, extra precautions would be taken with that patient. Another weird thing about the apparition is that it always seemed to be seen by just the RN. Not a single CNA has personally seen the apparition. My mother always said that he knew who would be able to help the most at the time. I, on the other hand, took it as completely the opposite. I always thought that it was almost to mock the RNs because he was letting them know that something was about to happen and that they couldn't do anything about it. Even though I'm not an RN, it still creeps me out every time I walk down the hall and she points out where she has seen him. I have been working night shifts at a hospital for seven years now and I have had quite a few stories. There was one time I came into work one night. Jen, one of the nurses, told me that my other co-worker Jay had the creepiest thing happen to him a few hours prior. A patient had passed away in one of the rooms abruptly, so the room was cleaned and was quickly occupied by another patient who had coded and was pronounced dead, but was then resuscitated. Soon after being admitted in his room, he complained to the nurse, I can't be in here. This man won't stop looking at me. He's really worried about his dog. His dog doesn't know that he's dead. She had assumed that he was just seeing things and said, Oh yeah? What does he look like? He described the deceased patient perfectly. I could see the chills running down her spine as she was telling us the story. It turns out that the man did have a dog as well. The new admission was moved to another room. Jay said, I don't believe in ghosts. They aren't real. I want to see it. Tonight, I'm going to provoke it so that it can show itself. 3 a.m. rolls around, and the three of us are at the nursing station. Jay starts playing YouTube videos of various puppy sounds. Soon after, two lift team guys come up. 
we forget what we were doing, close the video, and start another conversation. Suddenly, we all hear it, except for Jay, a dog barking in the same room, loudly and clear as ever. The lift team guys say, does anyone have a dog in here? Jen and I simultaneously shit ourselves. Hey guys, Duchess Stark here, and thank you so much for listening. Oh, were you expecting Mort? Sorry, he's over on my channel so we can finish off the remaining five stories. And trust me, it only gets better from here. Shouldn't you be there too? Click the link on the screen now or in the description box to follow us over. Don't keep me waiting.